Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Manage Everything. In this session, we are going to talk about waterfall and agile models and how to choose between the two models which suits your project. When people really talk about waterfall approach, it typically looks something like this, where we start with the requirement phase in a project and once it is complete, then move to the design phase and so on till the completion. First is the requirement management phase which is performed with an aim to capture most of the business use cases to help gain a better control and predictability over cost, schedule and the scope. The requirement phase is the one which builds the base for the subsequent phases in the project. This phase also syncs throughout with the change control board which either allows or rejects further changes or refinements in the requirement keeping the overall project objective in the center of every decision that they make. We call it waterfall because the result of one phase flows to the next one, just like a waterfall. Now let's talk about some of the advantages of waterfall model. Since the scope is defined and finalized, we could have clear objectives and better planning in place. As the base for the project execution is well formed and organized, it is easier to find the progress or deviation from the objectives. As the definition of requirements are confined within the larger scope and planning is done around the same, then probability of completing the project on time and within the budget is higher. Now let's look at some of the disadvantages. Uncertainty or risk is very high as outcome of the project cannot be measured until the very end. This also causes more number of failures. No changes or control changes only allowed within the scope. Due to unforeseen outcome in the initial phases, rework or redoing certain features is a costly and a time-consuming affair. Now let's look at Agile model. Before we understand what is Agile, let's first understand the reason for introducing this methodology. The whole idea of Agile revolve around involving the sponsors throughout the project phases, which basically help in many ways like active participation from stakeholders, getting early feedback, reduced volume of rework, etc. This methodology was initially developed for software industry, although many different industries are also adopting Agile of some or the other form. In Agile, we more or less follow the similar phases as Waterfall, but project delivery is broken down into multiple iterations of two to four weeks. This allows sponsors and stakeholders to review the delivered product from each iteration and provide feedback against the same. Delivered product is also called MVP, which is minimum viable product. Feedback received to change or improve something in the product could easily be taken into the next iteration and so on. Now let's look at some of the advantages of Agile. Less risk of project failure as sponsors and stakeholders are continuously reviewing the minimum viable product. Focus is to continuously implement the learnings from the previous iterations. Scope is flexible and could be changed looking at the outcome of few iterations. Let's look at some of the disadvantages. Due to undefined nature of scope in Agile, planning activities become a challenge. Changing of scope also impacts the overall timeline. Also risk of not meeting a timeline is higher in Agile. Focus is more on working software over comprehensive documentation. Following this approach in every iteration could show differences in MVP and thus deviation in the final product as compared to what was planned initially. Hope you all have understood both these phases. Now let's take a look at an example. We would see how execution works in both these models for the same project. Let's take an example of building an e-commerce platform such as Flipkart and assume that a total duration of nine months uh, would be required to complete this project, which basically is a total cumulative effort of all the different phases. In waterfall model, we typically have an average for the amount of effort we're putting for each phases. It's not an industry standard, but still works well for most of the projects. Keeping those average in mind, we assign typically around two months for requirement management, one month for designing, three months for coding and implementation, two for testing and verification, and last one month for the UAT. In this model, sponsors are normally not involved after the end of requirement management and until the start of user acceptance testing phase, unless they have to be involved for something very pressing. 
Due to this, the feedback related to the product is always received after the product is developed. And at that point of time, making even a small change could significantly impact the overall project. Now let's look at the same project using Agile model. Keeping in mind the same timeline of 9 months, we would break the project work into 9 iterations of 1 month each, where we would start with basic and first to complete requirements in the first iteration and complete the remaining part of the work in subsequent iterations. One important difference here is that it is possible to receive the feedback from the sponsors and stakeholders on the minimum viable product delivered at the end of every iteration and that is why it is also easier to make the changes as for the feedback provided as they are identified in the early stage of the project execution as compared to in waterfall model. Now let's understand that when should we use waterfall model. It is always advisable when sponsors exactly know what they want and will not come up with a lot of changes during the project execution no changes in the scope and it involves fixed price contract. If you have done similar projects in the past and are familiar with the executions as well. Now let's understand when should we use agile model. There is no clear definition of the product and you have to start working on the basis of high level scope. For example here we may have to build something which is similar to flipkart.com end product could very well be different than what is planned initially. There would be changes in the project requirement as and when sponsors provide their feedback. And also the project definitions are not clear then including sponsors are important to avoid unnecessary rework at the end of project life cycle. In Agile it is always advisable to break down the features into different iterations and involve sponsors to provide feedback. So to give a final verdict, both of these models have different use cases. When to use which one and why completely depends on several factors like type, complexity or scope of the project. When the scope is well defined and not changing, sponsors are also well aware of what they want, then we should go with waterfall. When sponsors do not have the complete definition of the scope or there are a lot of undefined complexities involved then we should go with Agile. This brings us to the end of the session. Hope you have liked this. If you have any queries or concerns or a topic you want me to explain next, then please post on the comment section and I'll reply back to you as early as possible. Please do like my video and subscribe my channel for the latest videos on project management. Thank you.